day, everybody. This is Father Andre Metrajean from Our Lady of Lords in Erath, Louisiana, and today we have another podcast for you to help you on your Lenten journey towards the Lord. Today we're going to talk about praying with kids. So this especially goes out to you, parents and grandparents. Uh, I know it's sometimes it's a chore to try to get the kids to even go to bed, and now you're talking about want to pray too. But uh, it's a beautiful gift that the Lord calls us to pray with our kids as a family. So we have two guests with us in the studio, and I'll let them introduce themselves at this moment. I'm Sarah Trosclear. And I'm Tim Trosclear. And they live in Lafayette, Louisiana, and they've been married for how many years? Seven. Seven, Seven years. Seven. All right. <laughs> so, and they have how many kids? Four with one on the way. Four with one on the way. When, when do you do? Uh, August. August. The Feast of the Assumption. Oh, uh, August 15th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're going to do the Fet de Vermilion? Probably not. <laughs> That's not a good day for you? In spirit. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to talk about praying with the kids and what it means. So, let's first talk about when is a good time to pray with kids. Let's get practical. Like, what time of the day? What time of the week? Well, every day, morning and night prayer, if you can do that. And, and the then, Angelus at lunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think if you get that routine down, even if prayer goes horribly, which it often will, if you get that routine down, you'll see uh, order on their faces eventually, you know, and in their and even so in their body. Let's say let's, everyone's got to start somewhere. So where would you recommend starting first? Choosing one. What, what do you think the best for the family? The morning uh, or night? Uh, I tough. say jump in mm. and do all three of them if you can. Because mm. honestly, every change we've made as a family that we've hoped would bring virtue and order to our family has seemed impossible at first. Mm-hmm. And it was until we did it. So my new kind of mantra, I guess, as a mom is just jump in. and Jump in. It's going to be a mess. but clean, It's going to be hard, but it's going to be hard mm-hmm. if you do it yeah. gradually as well. So just... Mm-hmm. And so there are practical ways, too, to do Let's talk about morning prayer, pray in the morning. Mm-hmm. When's a good time to pray in the morning? Because morning can be chaos, especially in school mm-hmm. days when people are going out to catch buses and, and, and uh, caravans. When's a good time to pray in the morning? So our experience is a little bit different because we homeschool. Um, so our morning routine, which I highly recommend, is wake up, make beds, put daytime clothes on, pray, and then we eat breakfast. Um, now, if we were packing up the kids and getting them ready for school in the morning, mm-hmm. it would be a lot more difficult and probably a lot shorter. Um, I would just think? say it would be shorter and maybe I would sooner skip making the beds than, than skipping prayer. Yeah. Right? But, I mean, I think you can do both. Like and, a morning offering, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. yeah all, Saint, all uh, Saint, I love St. Jose Maria Escriva. Mm-hmm. He talks about the heroic minute, like when you right. first get up and, right. and, yeah. and pray. So even if it's a simple morning offering to the Lord, which takes 30 seconds mm-hmm. as a family before they eat breakfast. Mm-hmm. You can say but, it with grace almost. Too. Yeah, but I would have a place in the house specifically for prayer. And uh, whatever you do, if it's 30 seconds to 15 minutes, have a posture for prayer. Let's talk about that. So we talk about when. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about where. And you brought the topic up. The catechism. I love the catechism section on prayer, the fourth section mm-hmm. of the catechism. It talks about how every house should have a prayer section, mm-hmm. a prayer altar, a prayer oratory, whatever you want to call it, a place set apart with maybe beautiful images of Our Lady and of mm-hmm. Our Lord. Um, let's talk about the where, the environment, that, uh, especially for kids. Kids are very um, visual right, and, right. And, and they are very sensual in, in mm-hmm. the sense of uh, they pick up things. So let's talk about how, how do you create an environment of prayer, a section of your house for prayer. So uh, the center of the living room is the best place. Uh, because it shows the the children that that is the center of the home, right? That prayer is the center of the home. Uh, and, and when you talk about place, you also talk about all the other, I think, physical things that go with that. So having, let's say, a small altar in the center of the living room or, or you know, central to the living room. It could be a shelf, yeah. even on the wall. It doesn't have to be a piece of furniture. Mm-hmm. But having it include things like candles for prayer, which the kids just get excited about, you know, lighting real the candles. candles. Yeah, yeah, real wax real candles. One hundred percent wax candles. Um, you can uh, find beeswax candles on Etsy mm. for way cheaper than other places. <laughs> and um, uh, having a bell mm. uh, and a real 
Can the kids take turns playing the bell? They love the bell. taking turns ringing the bell. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, and then they know, drop everything you're doing and immediately come and kneel down. Mm-hmm. And they love it. That's been one of the best things. It took practice. At first, we had to ring the bell and make them practice coming kneel down um, immediately. And it took probably a few months for them mm-hmm. to get good at it on a regular basis when we actually implemented it. But now it's so nice. No one says anything. They hear the bell. They run and kneel in their spots, which we assigned them, which I think was an important part Mm -hmm. as well, having assigned spots. Um, And they just know that they're going to fold their hands and ideally will not speak until prayer begins. So those little um, habits. Time of silence. Yes, it really brings order to the process. Physical things, that so kneeling Mm -hmm. and and lighting candles, ringing bells. Mm -hmm. Images of physical interaction that is used. A yeah. crucifixion on the altar. I mean, I'm sorry, a crucifix on the altar. <laughs> <laughs> Classically, the church says that the best place to start with what type of prayer. So we said when, we said where, what, what type of prayer. So the rosary is is, 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 is a classical way to start. And I remember as a kid, we would watch uh, that cheesy uh, EWTN rosary from the Holy Land with all these mm-hmm. images. And it was very cheesy, but as a kid, it helped me pray and meditate because the images were in front of me. Right. So maybe having certain icons, certain images, mm-hmm. even maybe even maybe even a screensaver. I don't know, but something no, to help. No the, no screensaver. No screensaver. <laughs> but no. something to help the kids uh, visualize what's going on and yeah. helping them. And the rosary is, is great because it's physical. You get the kids have beads in their hands. The mm-hmm. first fidget spinner, right, mm-hmm. <laughs> is the rosary. Something physical they can tactile. They can mm-hmm. touch. And uh, uh, it's not too long either. No, uh, the the rosary's not as long as you think when you, when you start praying it. You go through it. But uh, also praying the traditional prayers of the church, which is praying the Psalms, right? Rosary's traditional prayer of the church, but also praying the Psalms. And we pray um, the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which gives us a very uh, regulated and set way to say the prayers. And the kids learn all the responses and everything like that, so they take part. Um, it's more accessible than the whole Liturgy of the Hours. It's very, it's very it cheap. So, so it's based off the Liturgy of the Hours. Liturgy yes. of the Hours is what priests and nuns and monks have prayed for centuries. It's mm-hmm. the official prayer of the church mm-hmm. after Mass. Mm-hmm. And the Little Office of Mary is like a truncated, shorter version for, for busy people mm-hmm. right. uh, out in the world. And you can I've seen these at almost every Catholic bookstore yeah, you for just a, a few dollars. Uh, Acadian Religious, they have it there. Um, Shout out to Art. He'll give you a discount. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you just say, say Father Metro John's name. Um, and, and they have the Latin and the English. And you can intermingle both, but the kids love Latin. Uh, they they like the sound of it because it's kind of, it, it can, you pronounce all the consonants now this, now this very might, clearly. If I'm hearing you on the line and you're talking about Latin, I'm like, whoa. Well, I, my kids can barely speak English. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How are we going to, what the heck are we going to do Latin? But right. I think a important thing to remember is Latin is the root of every Western language in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. So we, a lot of our kids are right now in high school learning Spanish, mm-hmm. they're learning French, and they kind of need these sometimes for their for their careers. And, right. and, for the, and so basic little Latin phrases mm-hmm. uh, are very good foundation for their linguistic learning. This was, and on. it's the sacred language of the church. And it's really simple. So let's talk about how to pronounce Latin real quick because it's, it's it can be very intimidating. I think the key is to pronounce every syllable, right? So in English, mm-hmm. we have a lot of silent mm-hmm. syllables, dead letters that just kind of float around, mm-hmm. right? Uh, not with Latin. Latin is mm-hmm. very efficient. All the consonants. Doesn't waste. Mm-hmm. Doesn't waste. So as long as you pronounce every syllable, I think it's a way to start. Right. Uh, and, 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 and if you butcher it, hey, yeah. you, you butcher well, it. Also, but I think kids love mysterious things that are, that are mm-hmm. different. Yes, it definitely sets the space apart, just like the, the, the physical differences in having an altar mm-hmm. and the religious images. Um, Latin, in a different way, makes mm-hmm. it... I think the simplest way to start would be the glory be. The glory so like, be. Maybe start there. Mm-hmm. And so glory patri et filio spiritu sancto. Secret Arab Chipio and Nunca Semper Secular Secular. And you can find these on, on Online, YouTube, you know, YouTube. The, uh, the Pater Noster, the Our Father, after that. And then the little, so saying the Psalms in English so everybody can really know what they're talking about and memorize it. Uh, that's the other thing. You pray the same prayers every right? day because you're putting on a rule of prayer. You're not just, um, uh, Pope Benedict put it this way when you say the prayers of the church, you say the prayers that you come to God on His terms. When you say your private prayers and you're talking to God throughout the day, that's that's necessary, but you're coming to God on your own terms. And so when you say these prayers regularly, 
uh, you begin to think like the church and her traditions. And think like Christ. Christ uh, is the author of the Right, psalms. since he prayed the psalms, right. right. Um, but, but the little Latin phrases like uh, um, Domine exaudia ratione man, right? And the kids responding to that, they love that. And, and, it, and it also, like you said, it sets it apart from everyday things that we do, since this is supposed to be set apart from everyday things that we do. And it's really not as hard as it seems. Mm-hmm. Um, and the kids don't understand most of what you say in English anyway, so you might as well start with the habits of, um, of Latin because it's, it's just so important. Let's talk about okay, discipline in prayer. So, yes. uh, uh, it, Tim's really good at this. It, it's very hard uh, for parents to even get their kids to come to church, to go to school, and to add one more habit is kind of frustrating. Mm-hmm. So how do you best discipline your kids in, in a healthy, joyful way uh, mm-hmm. for prayer. Well, let's say our oldest is six, so uh, it's going to be different, right? If you have kids in high school, but uh, we we just expect it of them, and when they don't do it, we let them know that they were wrong not to, right? So, so we kneel down for prayer in the morning, and my youngest is almost two, and he he cannot keep his body still. He can't. So he has to kneel in front of me. And I grab his hands, and I hold them, and I hold his shoulders up, and I hold him still. In a fatherly way. In a loving absolutely. And, and he knows that, um, he knows, I, I mean, he gets upset with me. And, and I anger him, because I'm stopping his fallen nature from doing what it wants, which is to more easily fall into a kind of disorder and nothingness. And we're, we're putting that on for them. And they find it frustrating, but they also hear us whispering to them, uh, you know, I love you, we're doing this for your good, but you're going to listen, right? And I think parents are often scared that something like this will cause a, a hatred of religion uh, because you're being authoritative with, with the, and the will, the fallen will just hates being told what to do. Um, and that doesn't go away with adulthood, but... Uh, when you tell them what to do, they don't like it and, and they frown and it, and it looks like you're making them hate things. But later, you see them feeling the order you're giving them and they are thankful for it. Uh, they're exhausted when you don't give them that order and you can see it on their faces. Even when they're crying, when you're telling them what to do, they're thanking you for it. Uh, and, well, and then yeah. um, conversely, when you're not giving them order, mm-hmm. And they are shrieking like banshees and mm-hmm. laughing hysterically. Quite often. Like there's, <laughs> there's um, kind of a lost look on their faces, mm-hmm. you know, because they don't, they can't control themselves even in their happiness. Um, and I think that that's, that's a, I mean, obviously that's a problem mm-hmm. as well. So let's let's kind of wrap up. Um, what are each of you give one last final thought on praying with kids? Hmm. <laughs> Well, don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid to start doing it, and don't be afraid to be very clear in your rules for prayer. Uh, you're not going to turn them off to religion. The their own wills will do that for them at some point. But if you do <laughs> this, you will give them something to come back to if they walk away. So I would highly encourage you to have a uh, a rule of prayer in the home that sets them in order and gives them the virtue of religion. And if they don't like it later and they fall away, they'll have something to come back to. kind of reminds me of uh, if you're going to learn to play drums. Mm-hmm. Well, the first thing you have to do is learn the basic drum beats. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're, they're not the most uh, appe- like appealing way. Like when you first want to learn drums, you want to learn how to like... Right, scales and piano. Everything, right? So just yeah. the, the basic... Um, uh, and that lays a foundation to later on. So obviously as a kid, they're not going to understand the depths of the psalms. And they're not going to have, uh, probably not going to have a mystical experience and, and float in the middle of the air, right? <laughs> but it's laying the foundation for them mm-hmm. uh, for, to later learn the playfulness of prayer. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so, mm-hmm. all right, last thought. Um, I think, again, with the, the, the initial fear that parents might have to start something like this, maybe even the fear that because they don't do it or they're not drawn to it naturally, that they maybe feel hypocritical um, or like they're pretending around their kids. But obviously so much of parenting is us being better because we want our kids to be you better than we are. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so it's all going to be hard. It's and it's going to be hard because there's no order. Or it's going to be hard because you're trying to impose order on chaos. 
So better the difficulties that come with trying to impose order mm-hmm. than dealing with the consequences of not having order. All right, beautiful. We're, we're going to wish everyone a holy happy Lent. Approach it on some pod share. Nomine Christi. Amen. Mm-hmm.